dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. I recently collaborated with Dementia UK to provide some digital content for their website and practice development team, which provides ongoing learning and development for Admiral Nurses nationally. The central role for Admiral Nurses is in supporting caregivers and families for people living with dementia, which means being there when people really need help, listening and problem solving. They are specialist dementia nurses with loads of advanced skills and they provide life-changing support that helps so many people. With the development team lead, together we identified an area in which I could help. There was a need for a webinar session on medicines management and safety, a query that the nurses often encounter, but one that they needed just a little bit more targeted teaching in. Although my PhD is in quality of life outcomes in dementia, I am also a community pharmacist. Medicines management was my original forte. For today's blog, I am going to summarise the key points of this webinar as I believe that researchers in the area that don't already know could benefit from learning about medicines in dementia and how they are managed in the care plans of people living with dementia. So firstly, as we know, there is currently no cure for dementia, but it is often possible to relieve some symptoms via drug therapies. Drug treatments do not work for all types of dementia and they do not work for everyone. There is no one-size-fits-all policy in dementia medication planning and some people may need to try multiple drugs to see what works for them. As Alzheimer's disease accounts for around 75% of all dementia cases, this is the presentation of dementia that I will be focusing on today. The pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease is complex and not all too well understood. There are multiple hypotheses that try to explain the cause, which in turn have led to drug developments. The key one being the cholinergic hypothesis, which states that a possible cause of Alzheimer's disease is via the loss of central cholinergic neurons, which results in a deficiency of acetylcholine, a key neurotransmitter that is involved in memory and learning. As a result, we have two main drug classes in Alzheimer's medication. We have the cholinesterase inhibitors, which prevent the reuptake of acetylcholine, which leads to the increase in the duration of effect and action of acetylcholine in the brain. And we have the NMDA receptor antagonists, which block the NMDA receptors. These work at the cellular level to limit calcium influx, which is thought to therefore reduce brain cell death. There are four commonly prescribed drugs for the management of Alzheimer's disease. They are dinepazil, rivastigmine, galantamine, and mimantine. The first three are all acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, and mimantine is an NMDA receptor antagonist. These drugs are used to control symptoms and symptom progression in Alzheimer's disease. They can also be prescribed in dementia with Lewy bodies, Parkinson's disease-related dementia and mixed dementia. They will not be given in frontotemporal dementia, which is typically treated with antidepressants, and vascular dementia, which will usually be given drugs to treat the vascular problems, such as high blood pressure and heart disease, but also controlling diabetes and smoking cessation if necessary. If vascular disease is suspected alongside Alzheimer's disease, so the presentation is mixed, then these drugs cannot be used too. There is also good evidence for the joint use of dinepazil and mamantine in severe dementia. Combination therapy is something that can be adopted on a case-by-case basis and can have a lot of benefits for the person. Although these drugs are not cures, drug therapies can boost cognitive health, aid with anxiety, concentration and memory, and improve motivation in general daily life. They are not without their side effects though, which can be quite unpleasant for the patient, things like gastrointestinal upset, headaches and dizziness, and it must be noted that around 10% of people with dementia will be unable to tolerate these drugs because of their side effects. There are also several risks to be alert for when it comes to dementia drugs. It is likely that a person living with dementia may be on multiple drugs, polypharmacy, and there are quite a few interactions to look out for, not just with prescribed drugs, but with over-the-counter remedies true. There's also the issue of metabolism. Aging is associated with a reduction in first-pass metabolism. For every year past the age of 40, there is around a 1% reduction in this, which is likely due to a reduction in the liver mass and blood flow. And in dementia populations, there are other factors that can adversely impact metabolism too. If a person is of low body weight, poorly hydrated or poorly nourished, this can play a role 
too in how the drugs are broken down and the risk of side effects. Non-adherence is another key issue which describes when the patient's actions do not match agreed recommendations. The most common reason is simply forgetting doses, but people are non-adhere for loads of reasons, including avoidance of side effects. And lastly, there's titration, which refers to the process of gradually increasing a drug to achieve optimal amounts for the patient. This is done with dementia drugs to build up tolerance to side effects and minimize the risk of cholinergic excess. Some drugs come in titration packs to aid this process. However, as the dose is escalated, the probability of side effects may increase too. The key pragmatic aspects involved in dementia drug management include addressing non-adherence, If this is due to forgetting, there are several tools that can be used to minimize this, such as whiteboard, reminder charts, Amazon Alexa, and reminder apps on your phone. We would also encourage taking up medication delivery services with their pharmacy provider to ensure that there is no medication backlog. This will minimize the risk of overdosing too. Monitored dosage systems, such as doset trays, are also a useful strategy as the medications are pre-dispensed into trays. And considering things like drug formulations is key, practical things like difficulty opening bottle caps and difficulty with swallowing can be real barriers to adherence, but can typically be fixed by switching to liquids or dispersible formulations or patches. Ensuring that all medicines are safely stored in locked drawers away from access by children and that expired drugs are taken to pharmacies for proper disposal is also very important. Overall, medications are indeed useful for dementia care and management, but they are not without their risks. When managed effectively, these risks are minimal, but being aware of them and addressing them as soon as they arise is essential. This is particularly important in this particular population where cognitive function and decline are real challenges. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.